exciting episode on my channel. Sobrang sabik na sabik na ako makausap siya. I have so many questions to ask her and gusto ko talaga ta yung plataforma niya. Kaya at least now, mas mapag-uusapan natin this morning. Ang aga, nakapagkape ka na ba? Ayin, Berna! Hi, guys! <laughs> <laughs> Actually, sobrang chill lang ng interview yeah. na to. <laughs> and gusto ko talaga super chikahan lang tayo. Yeah. Really light lang. And baka siya pa in the end mag-interview sa akin. Because, guys, I mean, she's a girl after my heart. You know, my, my, my favorite, bias. My favorite <laughs> compliment is, ito yung Nicole Cordovez ng batch na to. Sabi ko, mm -hmm. oh! <laughs> Thank you, Girl. <laughs> okay, Ayin, let's start with the dream. Like, when was it first conceived? Sa head mo na parang, wow, I love pageants. You know, I'm so into it. One day, baka. I think, nung bata pa kasi, kasi I would really watch pageants. As in, like, you know how the results would end late night na? Oh, sure. I remember yeah. I would stay up kahit may school, kahit may paso, kahit anong mangyari. I really want to know, ano bang, paano ba ito nang, nangyari? As in, grade school, high school, even back when Miss Miriam Kiambao was mm -hmm. a candidate, ganun. That early. Mas pageant fan ka kasi sa akin, ha? As in, pageant fan talaga ako. Uh -oh. I even worked at Miss Universe 2016. Ah! Dito sa Philippines, uh -oh. when they had it in MOA. Yeah. Yung ganun ako ka-fan. Wow. Na, I was really like, going for it. But then, obviously, as a fan, I also knew na hindi ako tall enough. Kasi mm -hmm. usually, either my height requirement or just, yeah. it was just an expectation. So, hala hindi siya possible. Mm -mm. Um, but then, this year it was. So, yeah. I, I went for it. Okay, so, announcement na screen up na yung height requirement. You passed your applications. And then, nalaman mo you're in. So, how did you start building your team? Oh my gosh. Sobrang, you know, I went into this talagang no planning yeah. whatsoever. Kasi it was um, an opportunity of a lifetime. And I, I thought to myself, parang, oh, I'm getting old. I can't delay this dream just to be a perfect candidate, you know? So the moment I saw it, it was on my Facebook news feed. Sabi ko, okay, magsasambit na ako ngayon ngayon din. So yeah. I got all of the photos that I had. So from brand shoots, kahit DIY makeup. Mm -hmm. As in, sobrang hindi talaga ako prepared. But then, I was also lucky because when Top 100 was announced like two, three months later on, um, some people reached out to me. And yeah. yun talaga yung inasahan ko na, kasi I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. So I had, you know, Nicolo. Nicolo reached out to me. Sabi niya, Hi, Nicolo. <laughs> Ayin, wala kang headshots. Kailangan yeah. natin ayusin yan. So I was really, you know, accepting what I was getting at that time, yeah. na parang whoever was willing to help me, I said, okay, how can we work together? Yeah. And it was mostly that. Pero, I think you are a very good testimony talaga to all the girls out there na walang background at all sa modeling, pageants, which I kind of know the feeling of mm -hmm. because hindi rin naman ako like super um, in the modeling industry before. And then when I got into pageantry, parang kasama mo mga Pima. Oh. Alam mo yun, <laughs> they have all these contacts with designers. Yes. So how was the... Um, how did you choose kung anong camp ka to be in? Mm -hmm. um, anong sa head mo agad nag-rundown na, ito yung training that I need to get, this and that. Like, were you familiar with that? I was mostly familiar with, like, from the outsider perspective. Pero kasi now that I'm in the pageantry industry, it's grabe palang trabaho getting into it, right? So, for example, for the camp. The first thing I did was to contact my friend, si Miss Jensen, of last mm -hmm. year. So, oh. yung last year, Miss Universe Jensen. Sabi ko, MJ, I don't know what to do. Like, who can I ask to train for Pasarela? I thought I needed to pay. I thought yeah. I needed to hire somebody. But she was like, oh, let me connect you to Tita Raj. Kasi mm -hmm. she's with KF. So, yun. And then, he was like, can you come in the next day? And ako naman, go na go ako. As yeah. in, like, every single day, I had to figure out something that I needed to work on. So yun yung inuna ko pasarela. Yeah. And then siguro after noon, it was like slowly the photo shoots, yung mga pasahog photo yeah. shoots. And parang nakikita talaga namin yung 
evolution of Aina in every photo shoot. Yeah. And eventually, you got your styling right na yeah. and on point. Talaga. Kasi ang tagal niya, I mean, ang tagal and ang bilis niya na process na parang every time I see what won't work for me yeah. and then what I like. And then towards the end, I think nung ako na lang mag-isa sa bubble, like fixing myself up, I realized what I liked on myself and what I was confident with. So, yun. <laughs> yeah. Pero, yeah. expectations and reality, parang feeling ko from an outsider perspective, we get that, yeah, joining pageants and the training will be hard. But mm-hmm. did you expect it'll be this hard? No. <laughs> Kasi it's, it's so glamorous. It's so glamorous. Akala ko parang what you see on stage is all of it. But mm-hmm. then, I mean, rehearsals is one thing. Yeah. And parang, you had my opening number dance mm-hmm. and then my everyday OOTDs na parang ako, ano nang namasuot ko sa bahay. I don't have to dress up that often. But then, and sa tagal ng pandemic, di ba? Oh, Sanay na tayo sa t-shirt sa and shorts. Yeah. Loungewear. Oh, my. It's like a loungewear, pero may butas yung t-shirt. t-shirt. <laughs> Kaya nga eh. So yun, that was a big adjustment for me kasi parang, how do I complete, like for example, the bubble was one week. Every day, aura, parang kung, mm, di ko alam kung maano ko to gagawin. And it was really, at first, I remember my first day, I felt so underdressed. Na parang ako, oh my god. Bakit? Ano suot mo nun? Kasi naman, magbe-breakfast lang. <laughs> Naka-rough. Oh my gosh, <laughs> May mga girl. sheer. Welcome to pageantry. Sabi ko, oh my gosh, so hindi ako makakamaba ng breakfast buffet looking like this. Ano suot mo nun? Um, I was wearing like a, like a romper na parang shorts, this tube. I mean, it looked good, uh-uh. but... Like cute. But underdressed. <laughs> I was like, wait, lang. That was, I think it really didn't bother me naman na, you know, I, I wasn't as prepared, like OOTD-wise. But the thing is, people will take photos and then later on, that photos will be on Instagram. Later yeah. on, those photos will be side by side oh, with so the so other. Yes. Yun talaga pa mo. Wait lang. Yeah. <laughs> Nag-may make-up pa lang ako. May picture na ako. Sa yeah. <laughs> sa ano. So yun, I didn't expect that. Pero I guess I should have. Yeah. Pero now I know. Now so you know. So the next day sa breakfast, ano nasuot mo? Ah, me- medyo nag, ano na ako, nag-prepare na ako. Tapos natuto ako mag-retouch. Yun pala. Oh gosh. Kasi like for example, diba, we were wearing masks. Yeah. Tapos oily na ako. Tapos biglang, ayun pa picture piece. Sabi ko, ah okay. So remove it, picture. And then later on, it was on Instagram again. So parang Okay, next time before I take a photo, magpaparito siya. Yeah. <laughs> Glass skin. <laughs> Glass skin. <laughs> Dewy. Dewy um, dumplings, you know. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so getting into the competition and finding out na accepted ka your part of, you, you kept accelerating mm-hmm. to the finals. Um, ano yung goal na sinet mo sa sarili mo? Like, okay, ito yung, kasi di ba usually you envision eh, yes. na ito, Parang to claim it, mm-hmm. di ba? Winner's mindset. Mm-hmm. So, how did you envision your journey to be for you? For me, I really wanted to get on stage. Like, I wanted to uh, be standing there on TV or wherever people would be watching the coronation night. Yun talaga yung my biggest goal. Kasi we started at top 100, which is a lot. Yeah. A lot of girls. A lot of girls talaga. And if you look at the photos pa lang, it's like, top 30 yeah. with all of these girls and knowing that I have you know some like odds against me mm-hmm. so to me sabi ko, I just need to stand firm in my goal na I want to get to the final final round yeah. um like ideally mahawakan kay microphone <laughs> oh my gosh at lalamunin niya but, um, you know, it really was difficult to get there. And grabe yung, I think yung batch namin, and dami, anyone yeah. could have gotten to the microphone round. So, um, I was happy and I was able to stand on stage and matawag yung sanuan and I can do my little cape cape thing. And it was such a joy to watch you. Kasi yeah. parang feeling ko, it was a win for more girls out there. Like it was more inclusive. Mm-hmm. And that was actually your messaging throughout your journey. Yeah. Diba? So mm-hmm. how nag change ba yung messages sa yo? You already have your own community. Mm-hmm prior to joining MUP. Yeah. And now, mas malaki yung platform na ibinigay sa'yo. Mm-hmm. Nag-iba ba yung messages? Nag-iba yung questions ng people around you? Yeah. I think, if anything, the biggest difference is 
ngayon napakita ko how to be a work in progress because i used to you know talk about it a lot like sa youtube videos ko oh this is how i became um a businesswoman how i became but then i was speaking from like a result perspective like tapos na eh. yeah. like tapos na i was already a businesswoman i was already a podcaster but then to actually show them na guys i'm not a beauty queen but i'm trying to be yeah. And I think that showed people that it was more than just talk. It was actually, you know, putting things into action. Shocks, halasi ayin. She's starting from scratch, and you know, maybe she's not perfect, but it's somehow inspiring too. Na parang somebody can fail yeah. in public and still, you know, be celebrated. happy. Yeah, I, celebrate I, I, it. I really love that. Um, we can normalize by not being the perfect yeah. person on social media. And I was just trying. I really yeah. was trying. And I wouldn't call it fail. Like, yeah. <laughs> failing in public. Para, yeah. Siguro for other people na mas nega yung hangin na ini uh-huh. <laughs> It'll be like a failure. Pero you, you're definitely a very celebrated queen. Like, I'm establishing you. that right here. <laughs> so you talked about um, your work in progress. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was the hardest part of your training besides the pasarela? And natuwa pala ako sa duck walk video mo. Oh na parang, God, dapa, dapa. <laughs> Kasi nangyari yun sa akin. <laughs> ang hirap diba? Nangyari yun sa akin yung first ever training ko, nung first ever pageant ko. Ang sakit. Puro pasa. Parang, naka-beauty queen pa ba to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pero, grabe pala yun. You see, that's something that you don't see on stage. Mm-hmm. Na parang, grabe pala yung training. Um, but I guess, outside of the pasarela training, it was training my mind to get used to uh, all the external opinions kasi hindi naman ako sanay because my community even though I've been a content creator for a while sobrang supportive talaga ng community ko mm-hmm. and it's always like people who are into productivity goal yeah. setting because all of a sudden pageantry so parang hindi ako sanay to be receiving so many like criticisms about especially my body like mm-hmm. wala akong magagawa sa height ko like wala ni extensions wala wala ni extensions yeah. like your body type parang hindi ko talaga it's not something i can work on it's not the same as a criticism na oh i mean you should improve yung speaking more or how you deliver kasi yun i can work on but yeah. like when people comment na pandak how do i deal with that is it more hurtful it's not anymore. It used to be like honestly, the first siguro two weeks, as in lahat ng inaral ko about self esteem, self worth, as in in apply ko talaga siya parang okay, like th- this says more about them than it does about you. Yeah. As in ganon talaga ko meditation. But now I think I've gotten used to it. Na parang yeah, I mean I can't change myself. Okay, so now let's talk more about your advocacy also. Mm-hmm. Well, hindi naman siya kasi people when they think of advocacy parang it's a charitable organization, pupunta ka sa isang place, yeah. this and that. But this is what I actually want to teach the next generation of beauty queens and advocacy doesn't even mean you have to go out there and hand out stuff, diba? Parang it's really uh, what you stand for and what you went through and allowing others to go through what you did also mm-hmm. and get strength from that. Do you feel that through this platform, you were able to convert more people, to change more people's perceptions? Yeah, I think I think so, absolutely. Because um, when we speak of advocacy, usually it's about the impact. And most of the time, people see impact as something that you can physically get or yeah. physically give. But if there's anything I learned, it's that sometimes the impact you can also feel with how people react and respond and act because of oh, what you did or what you said. So um, it was really inspiring for me, especially when the young girls I really wanted to reach. Sila naman yung target. There was a target group of yeah. people that I wanted to reach out to. Na parang kasi I grew up. Na there was one kind of beauty, or there was one kind of I, I don't know, like one definition of beautiful, yeah. especially in the pageantry industry. But I think, ano eh, like pageantry is so powerful, mm-hmm. and I wish we could open it up to to more kinds of beauty. And it wasn't that I was trying to represent everybody else outside of it. It was just, I'm the. It's one step 
Yeah. So hopefully somebody else follows. Mm-hmm. Na, who's a little different too. Like doesn't have to look like me, but somebody who's her own self. And I think yung conversation around beauty lang, it's very, it's impactful in a way na it's not just vanity. I think it also allows, especially the younger generation to see okay, what opportunities do I have? Because, for example, if you don't think that you're worthy, if you don't think you're beautiful, if you don't think that you're deserving, ka, then you wouldn't go for those things. Because yeah. I remember when I was younger, um, I wanted to work on TV or in front of the camera, and I just thought that I didn't belong there. Yeah. But then, you know, when I would see girls like me, and parang, oh, they're trying, then it empowered me. So that's what I wanted to do. It wasn't... So I can save or, you know, like be that superhero, whatever. Yeah. It was just so I can try mm-hmm. and people can witness me try and others can follow. Because it's really not fatal, you know. If you go for your dream and it's you fall short, that's yeah. completely fine. I think it's beautiful. I learned so much and um, I hope that the experience opens up other women to also go for what they want. Yeah. I think this is the perfect time na, to do our question and answer portion. <laughs> Guys, na lang ako Q&A. Labas na yung popcorn na. <laughs> so, ito, this time, I collected questions from uh, Miss Universe mm-hmm. from 1990s kopong-kopong until God. today. Kasi, di ba yung mga Miss Universe questions, before they became political mm-hmm. recently, they were always about women. Yes. And I I love how it always reflected in every era kung saan yung standing ng women based mm-hmm. on the questions they ask. Love. Yeah. So, you're not gonna answer it ng 30 seconds lang because yeah. I feel like it's a grave injustice to Ayin's skills. <laughs> and mas gusto ko na din discuss natin siya. Pero, mm-hmm. there are questions here that didn't really age well. And I hope that we can open up that kind of dialogue mm-hmm. also na because I feel like not a lot of women actually realize where we stand now and appreciate where we were today, yes. uh, before. Mm-hmm. So, you've come a long cool. way. Yeah, exactly. But at the same time, I get disappointed if me mga candidates ask about um, yung mga questions on women versus men, na structure na questions. Mm-hmm. It's like, bakit? Kung ano yung sinagot ng candidate from. 10 years ago, medyo ganun pa rin ngayon. Mm. Archaic. Yes. So, I wish na kailangan natin ma- maging updated eh. Mm-hmm. Kasi we might be in danger of being complacent. Yes. Diba? And that has been, I mean, our feminism here in the Philippines, although we, it's held in high regard. Yeah. Like, diba? Compared to other countries, mm-hmm. it has been yeah. challenged recently na parang, wait, bakit? bumabalik tayo. Bakit backwards? Totoo, totoo. Right. <laughs> oh, lalo na sa pageant platform. You know, mm-hmm. it's like people really listen to the question and answer portion. So, yeah. I mean, if we could make those statements while on stage, I think the impact is even more ano, felt. Yes. So, let's get ito, started. Let's ito na. Pero, ano, ito medyo on the surface the questions. Mm-hmm. Na. Physicality, um, what is the biggest misconception about beauty? I feel like this is a good way to start yeah. the conversation. <laughs> the biggest misconception about beauty is that we have to have a set standard and we can't set our own. If there's anything that I've learned as somebody getting into the pageantry industry, it's that I am able to define what's beautiful to me. And if what's beautiful to me is who I am, then I should be you know, I should be allowed to express that. Because mm-hmm. what I experienced is parang people, you know, cage you to one definition, like one height, one skin color, one like face shape. Like, yeah. You know, who gets bigas lagging? It's not talaga. But I think beauty goes beyond that. Maybe beauty is also being able to set what's beautiful for yourself. Yeah. And I think you standard of beauty now is captured in terms of social media mm-hmm. language. You peg. Yes. Anong peg mo? Oh, anong peg this year? Uh-oh. Sinong panlalaban natin? Parang ganun. Parang Asian baby girl. Mm-hmm. Yung mga Asian ganun. Asian baby girl. I don't know what that means. You don't? Okay. Pero, <laughs> honestly. It's, it's like Asian baby girl is like, I just TikTok hear it. Yeah. So it's like a East Asian beauty, but then like, 
false lashes, long nails, thick makeup, that kind of thing. That was major like Asian Kylie wear. Jenner. Yeah, yeah, actually, you know, you you said it so well. Yeah. <laughs> and also, I think na appreciate the not new social media because do natin nakikita na may diverse beauties. Because before it's really like who gets to be on the billboard. Parang konti lang nagdidictate ng standards mm-hmm. of beauty. But with social media, parang, oh my god, I love freckles. Diba? <laughs> diba? Parang na-democratize yung definition natin of beauty. Like, exactly. At isa ka dot. <laughs> Thank you. Pioneer. My girl's a pioneer. Okay, so this is another hmm, controversial Ooh. question. Diba? Mm. Um, and it has different permutations. I'll say both. Like you, I wear a swimsuit when I compete. What would you say to people who believe that women wearing swimsuits in a public forum reduces them to sexual objects? And then another version of this is, if you could remove the swimsuit competition from the Miss Universe pageant, would you? Why or why not? That's so interesting. Mm -hmm. I think it all boils down to uh, our definition of empowerment. And, you know, like going into the competition, Personally, the swimsuit round empowered me because it allowed me to take charge of my body, how I choose to show it. But I guess if there's anything that we can do moving forward, it's to introduce choice. That if somebody were to compete in a pageant and they're not open to performing in a swimsuit, then they should have the choice to opt out of that or maybe wear something else. But I think, you know, if women choose and are empowered to wear their bikinis on stage and that for them is the definition of being an empowered woman then we need to also um, celebrate that actually i like you what you said na choice and i imagine ko na parang may gauge of conservatism yeah. and boldness mm-hmm. and anyway, like me feel free to wear a sarong yeah if you feel like you're most comfortable yes. in that, diba? Mm-hmm. And that shouldn't be taken against them. Na parang yes. you're less sexy, you're less attractive. Na I think yun din, nag adjust ng society natin yeah. na hindi na tayo cage sa, oh, abs. Yeah. Abs is beautiful. Parang ganun, diba? And actually, right now, feeling ko may shift lang against those who are bolder in their choices. Like, yeah. those who are more revealing, mm-hmm. diba? It doesn't have to be one or the other. Yeah. Like I think we should be able to celebrate, you know, the diversity of women, and not just physically, but also in our values. Now, if some women are more bold and they want to show more, then go for it. Yes. But at the same time, for those who don't want it, they should be equally celebrated. Especially if you worked hard for your body. Yeah. Bakit gusto mo ka abs? Is that so wrong? Or parang ano nagleg day ako yesterday, so like I'm aware my shorts. <laughs> Somebody, uh, I think, left a comment yesterday. And I think I, I just wanted to discuss. Somebody mm-hmm. said, na, kasi I lost weight. Yeah. I got really fit. Uh, like, I guess, nakita ng tao in transformation yeah. ko from last year. Ganyan. And somebody said, na, you said you were challenging beauty standards and now you're conforming to beauty standards by losing weight. Tas parang ako, first of all, yeah. <laughs> I, I lost weight not for Miss Universe, I was actually in the middle of my fitness journey because I wanted to be healthy Mm-mm. and I wanted to be strong. And, you know, my physique was, you know, a consequence of working out, eating healthy. Yeah. Just like, na, ano lang ko na, why would you take exercising against me yeah. if I wanted to get fit? Mm-hmm. So, yun lang. it's like women do something and then they want the other thing. And then it's just... And that my expectations. And I think we should just eradicate that. Let them choose. Yeah. Actually, that's what I was going to ask you then. Mm-hmm. Um, kasi personally, when I got into pageantry, syempre may mga mold tayo mm-hmm. pinafollow yes. kahit pa paano. Um, I was so afraid of losing myself. And I think this is the concern of every other pageant girl. Yes. Pa rin. Mm-hmm. So how did you not lose yourself? Did you pick which transformations you wanted for yourself? Mm-hmm. Yeah, ako talaga, my biggest, I guess, like, yung boundary ko is if I won't be doing this for Miss Universe, I'm not gonna be doing it now. Kasi, for example, I got a lot of offers to, like, um, papa surgery to yung cheeks ko because my face is too round, my nose, um, my arms. Like, and dami kong, and dami in offers sa na treatments na, I was like, well, 
I'm not gonna do this naman kung hindi ako sasali, so why would I do this now? And like the whole point of me being there is so I could be my best self. And to me, my best self didn't really involve you know, all those changes. Because yeah. I na before I even step on the stage, I get to define what I wanted for me. Because it all boils down to choice. For example, I wanted to work out. I wanted to get fit. Yun talaga, like, that's not something that was forced on me. Like, nobody yeah. told me to, you know, you need to lose ganyan ganyan para maging ac- No, like, I chose that I wanted to be a healthier, fitter ayin. Yeah. But stuff like changing my face shape, no, I, I wouldn't do that. Kasi, yun nga eh, sabi ko, kung ano yung ako na gusto ko is what I'll show. And to me, those boundaries were set by me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's a, like a very good tip for aspirants yeah. also. Because yeah. feeling it's really the fear of changing into someone you don't like. You don't recognize. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Have an idea before you even talk to anybody. Yeah. Kailangan strong talaga yung mm-hmm. core nyo, guys, yes. upon joining. Because... Ang dami. Ang dami magsasabi sa'yo. Oh, yeah. And that's why so many girls go over the boundaries na... It's these changes are too much na parang unrecognizable na so much changes na parang it's good like if you want it for yourself yes. but there are just honestly a lot of girls who are very malleable then and then you have these loud critical voices that yes. make it seem like if you don't listen to what I say you're not gonna win and exactly. that's like so much stress mm-hmm. for a pageant girl exactly diba so yun 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 cause I got into this like at 26 so parang I felt like I na form ko na yung own ideas ko yeah. I was pretty sure of myself at least when I uh, got into pageantry but yun yun ko what if I joined at 18 right Nako, like if people told me that my round face wasn't good enough at 18, I probably mm. would have agreed with them. Yeah. So yun yung nagu worry ako na. That's why we need to be more open about the changing standards. Yes. Because we don't want to force women into changing if they're it's not something that they want. Yeah. And if they don't know what they want yet. It, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Ang bata pa eh. mm-hmm. Like how would you know? Yeah. So those are one of the challenges that need to be addressed also in pageantry. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there's another question um, that doesn't sit so well anymore with us. Should weight limits be a requirement in Miss Universe? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. When we speak of Miss Universe, we talk about impact, beauty, purpose, yes. But like weight isn't something that should limit the definition of beauty anymore. I mean... Um, somebody said, I forgot who it was, I'm going to misquote her, but like a Miss Universe is a spokesperson. Mm-hmm. And somebody who's a spokesperson shouldn't be limited to their weight. Mm-hmm. So, no, I don't think a Miss Universe candidate should be um, should be given a weight limit. That's that's ridiculous. It's like, it's it's, you know, keeping so many women with high potential away. Yeah, that's true. And you mm-hmm. know what? This will sound ridiculous, pero ako nga na alam mo, feeling ko pasok naman ako oh. sa standard, and I was thinner back then. Pero medyo na stress ako because growing up, di ba, yung mga Miss Universe pageants, they always announce your waistline <gasps> and height oh, and so the numbers, and then mm-hmm. naging ideal nun sa atin na te bente lang ba yung waistline mo, yung ganon. Yeah. So parang growing Stats. up, oh yun growing up parang how do I reach Bente? Yung mm. ganon. So, para, that was yung pressure sa akin na I'm not even like, di ba, mm. parang isipin ng mga tao Bente waistline ko, pero no, it's 27 to 29. Di ba? Pero, uh-huh. di ba, iba-iba naman kasi tayo yeah. ng construction ng mm-hmm. beautiful bodies yeah. natin. Grabe yung focus before sa numbers right? na I'm so grateful it's changing today. Yeah. Kasi that shouldn't be the focus. When you look at a candidate, you should see, okay, how confident is she? How right. does she carry herself? Right. And that has nothing to do with somebody's weight. Yeah. To the point na parang, if you flash kasi the waistlines and stats, parang, ah, si ganito will get a higher score because it's mas maliit. <laughs> oh, oh, by one inch. Grabe, diba? So, mm. yeah. I'm, I'm glad na na transition. So you can we can see now na based on the questions they asked before. Iba na yung um, weight ng criterion, yung distribution, yeah. which is 
amazing. So, Thankfully. Yeah. Okay, let's go deeper. I don't know how you feel about this question. What could a man learn from a woman? Oh, I always that, that mixed question feelings is about so this. loaded. You know, yeah. yeah, cuz when I was rehearsing or like practicing for my Q&A, binabalikan ko din yung old question. So I go, what can a man learn from a woman? Cuz like now if we answer that in you know, like emotions, that's like, does that mean men aren't emotional exactly. or aren't capable of emotional intelligence? I think, siguro, I would answer it with um, our resilience and speak from, you know, the perspective na yung unique experience of women. Mm-hmm. Of course, like we still live in a patriarchal society. So like being able to rise above that is something that I guess men can learn from us because mm-hmm. it's not something that they necessarily go through in yeah. the same way. So I guess just to focus on the unique experience of a woman as opposed to what's stereotypically woman-like. Yeah. Actually, I have a hard time answering this question even before because I never really differentiated the skill set of men and women. And in our household, parang your roles were, kung ano kaya mo gawin gawin mo. Kung saan ka masaya gawin mo. Right. So parang now I'm forced to um, pick traits and to look for these traits. Mm-hmm. Na ang hira pa, challenging yeah. siya. Yeah, parang wala <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. We so, can learn from each other. Yeah. As in, the most I can answer, if ever, is in comparison to my boyfriend. Parang we, girls can handle more than three emotions at once and not explode. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> guys, if they like, feel too much, you're like... <laughs> or, or compartmentalize. <laughs> yeah. Lang. yeah, we have like an emotional, organizational Marie Kondo system <laughs> going on there. So you name the best, pero I can think of. Pero mm. other than that, pero not much difference you need. Yeah. And it's hard if you're put on the spot like that. Like, ano nga ba? <laughs> ano nga ba? And do you think yung mga answers before, like, we, uh, like it's easier to talk to men? Conversationally, you know, from point A to point B, though, you need answers before. Not so, how all. does it translate to today? Yeah, parang I think you know, it's really we're not when those answers were given out. I don't think they were necessarily based on reality, but more based on what were expected of men and women. But now that we are more open, those expectations are kind of blurred, and what we get to define what we expect from people. And I think. If there's anything that uh, this question would point out, it's that we can learn from each other, and that we don't have to focus on the differences, mm-hmm. nelang. Because that's not how we move forward. Yeah. Are you wrapping it up like that? <laughs> <laughs> Next question: Would you marry someone who wants to stay home while you earn for the family? I love that question. Because <laughs> 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 we have an expectation, but. For me, personally, as a career woman myself, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I was raised to have, I was raised with the expectation that I would be both mother and homemaker and a career woman. And it's not an easy job. And if I meet somebody who is willing to share the load with me so I can pursue my other career or my other passion and my other goals, then so be it. I'm looking for a life partner and not somebody who simply fits a mold. And it's also another thing is when we look down on men taking up the homemaker role, does that mean that we're going to be homemakers? Yes. Which shouldn't be the case because it's more than a full-time job. It's a 20, 24-7 oh gosh, job. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, like, I think we should stop looking at it from an external perspective. Na, ah, what will they say to their family? Or what will they say to their family? But more, okay, what are you co- contributing to the relationship? Yeah. Okay, next question is, what makes women politicians different from men? Ayan na naman tayo sa differenti- different. Na, ang hira pa rin ah. Yeah. Na, kasi it's like, how can you generalize women mm-hmm. as one kind? And then men is another kind. When there are great female leaders, yeah. awful female leaders, yes. great male leaders, awful ma- male leaders. So, parang it's hard. It har- it's hard to say. Alam mo, bigyan talaga dapat ng mic tong si Anita. Yun lang parang. Pero I love 
love that you acknowledge that. Mm-hmm. Kasi ano eh, it's like, you're this, if you uplift the women yeah. leaders simply by the generalization, you're also not giving us accountability for our actions. Because at the end of the day, we're not just women, we're individuals. Yes. We're capable of choice. We're capable of making our own decisions that may or may not be aligned with expectations in society. Yeah. So for example, um, society can expect a female leader to work with their emotions, be more emotional, more em- 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 empathic. empathic. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. But what if she's not? What if she's more analytical, logical? Yeah. Like, is that wrong? Is yeah. that, does not make her less? Mm-hmm. Does that make her not woman enough? Yeah. So yun, so parang, again, stop asking these questions. <laughs> <laughs> that was, actually, parang more of, naisip ko, when we elect a leader, it's more of to respond to the times. Like yeah. yung current situation natin, mm-hmm. not necessarily gender-based. But then, um, syempre, we can't also like disregard the fact na, in general, but we still look for a strong man. Yes. In that figure. So we're getting political here mm-hmm. now this time. But you know, that's I think the harm of like generalizing like one gender over the other or And at the same time we box them. We box na parang them. strong man ka. You're, you're your roles equipped. and platforms more are ito lang din, Yeah. And it's hard because how can we grow as a society if we don't change? Because if we do the same things over and over, how do we expect na magbabago yung resulta? Yeah. Right? So, I think we should redefine strength. Yeah. Strength is not just, you know, strength is it's not, not just strictness. Discipline. Discipline. Oh. <laughs> mag tayo. And gahas. Yeah. Gahas. Gahas. Wow. Yes. Word of the day. <laughs> Yeah, and so parang, I think we should stop assigning those words to, okay, this is a male characteristic, this is a female characteristic. Because yeah. it really narrows our vision. Yeah. Uh, we should see more. One characteristic you think we should look for in our next leader, given our current situation? I would say competence. As in competence in the sense na it's a job. At the end of the day, it's a job. So we need somebody who can follow timelines. Somebody who can say something, craft a plan, and actually follow through. Yeah. Yung mga stuff na hindi mo debate. It's something yeah. that you see on paper. We need somebody like that that we can rely on. Because if it's just, uh, like, emotions, like, we no. need KPI. Yeah, Tama KPIs. KPIs. <laughs> if we expect that from our employees, we yeah. expect that from our clients, our suppliers, why can't we expect that from our leaders? Yeah. Ako siguro bare minimum nga. Communi- someone who can communicate. Oh. Ma- right? madam- like, is that too much communication? To <laughs> oh, Kasi yung feeling ko, it all boils down to that, like, mm-hmm. with the handling of this pandemic situation. Yeah. Like, Create the Viber group or a WhatsApp group if you want something more secure. No, what's going on? Okay, so that wraps up our unique question and answer portion with Ayin. And, and I hope we got to take you guys through also like sort of the history of feminism in pageantry mm-hmm. and how, it, how the perceptions have changed to today. So Ayin, my question for you naman is, what questions do you think we should be asking women today? Oh, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I hope people would ask more questions about social issues. I, f- I think for one. Because we are moving towards an age where beauty queens are not just you know beautiful women on stage, but spokespersons. And... As a spokesperson, you need to be somebody who has an opinion on stuff. Yeah. And whether or not your opinion agrees with the general population doesn't really matter. As long as um, when you express yourself, you can stand by what you say. Again, I, I hope that that's more evident in the coming years. So we can show now we are more than just, you know, women on stage. We we are women with a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> women who can say stuff and yeah. actually mean them and create impact. Yeah, that's true. And mm-hmm. I hope you mga personality questions also as candidates that are not the cutesy ones. Na lang. Yes. Like something about 
yung accept mo na na career woman, you every woman. Yeah. Alam mo yun? <laughs> Hindi yung parang mm-hmm. pa-cute pa. Yeah, chong, like, if you could change something about your body, what would you change? What about you? Think about changing? You know, it's a good one. Yeah. What about you? Okay. Hey, ikaw. <laughs> okay, so, Ayin, you have made so many ripples and waves in the world of pageantry. But in a line, like, how do you want to change the face of pageantry in your own unique way? Ooh, in a line. In an Instagram bio. In an Instagram bio. <laughs> um, I guess... I want pageantry to be a place where women can celebrate who they are, choose who they want to be, and simply try. Mm. Pero yeah, I actually love that you really advocated trying. Yeah. Because you can apply it in all aspects of your life. And you know how you grow up then na um, people telling you na, Ay, hindi ka bagay doon. Mm-mm. That's like the most hurtful yeah. thing. But like, what's... Why is it a bad thing if I just wanted to experience or try it? Or like, if I'm going to lose, let me lose. Yeah. You know, let me experience it. And you can actually share things on social media na y- even though you're not good at it. Yeah. Diba? Like, it's okay to be not good. To yeah. not be perfect. Because sometimes we feel feeling natin kung nari, we got into a new sport. You need yeah. so many Olympics. Ka na, <laughs> ganun. But you can also be able Oh, pwede madapa. Oh my gosh, madapa ako ng pre. Ah, talaga? Madapa ako ng pre. Are beauty queens born or made? Beauty queens are made. Made by ourselves, our choices, and our own efforts. Thank you so much, Ayin, for doing this with me. This collaboration is something I really, really looked forward to for a while. And I'm so glad I got to talk to you more about your journey and your transformation. We will be rooting for you like in the next <laughs> ventures that you go into. Thank you. And continue using your voice to change the world. Well, thank you so much, Binibining Nicole. Finally, yata na in one frame. <laughs> hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more of my work, uh, you can visit my channel. That's Ayin Bernos, and on social media, Ayin Bernos everywhere or TikTok. Ayin per Tagalog. Um, and we have a podcast called Camp Confidence Radio. We should guest you soon. Go, girl. Once I I'm figure game. out how to do that. I'm super game. <laughs> Follow her, guys. I follow her for like a good restart to every week because if you want to build your self confidence and be inspired again, her posts are like my go to. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So if you like this episode, make sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video, share, hit the notification bell so that you won't have to miss an episode. Ito po si Nicole Gardalves na nagiiwan ng kasabihan. It is not the crown that makes the queen, but the queen who makes the crown. Queen Ayin. <laughs> <laughs> back na back out, bro. <laughs>